can you take pictures up a woman's skirt? According to the Massachusetts Supreme Court, you can. And the Georgia Supreme Court says you can text people unsolicited pictures of your genitals. Why? Because the law doesn't say you can't. Not because people are okay with it. These are just two instances of the law being a step or more than a step behind technology. So as technology continues to develop, what can we do to keep it from continuing to outpace the law? Joining us now here in New York is Al Jazeera legal contributor Jamie Floyd. Jamie, good to have you back. This case in Massachusetts, I've got to say, is stunning. Uh, they basically ruled that a guy who was taking pictures up of women's skirts could do it. That yeah. it wasn't illegal. Well, yeah, and, and there were two reasons for that. The, the pictures were taken in public, a place where you really don't have any reasonable expectation of privacy. And the women, and there were really only two documented, but the women were not undressed. They weren't naked or partially nude. And the peeping Tom law that was at issue required that you be in a dressing room or some place of privacy and be partially unclothed. And so the specificity of the law, what we always talk about, the letter of the law, was not violated. Right, and now they're trying to get new letter of the law and pass a law in Massachusetts that yeah. will specifically say that this is illegal, at, so we should mention that. At breakneck speed. Right, they've already passed the two houses. I think it's up to uh, Governor Deval Patrick to sign it. So that seems to be moving forward. But the question, of course, is, you know, couldn't the judge have looked at that peeping Tom law and said, hey, the intention of the law is or did they really have to stick to the letter of it? Well, you're asking, could they just go with the spirit of the law, right. right? What we talk about is the spirit of the law. This happened before, by the way, in the state of Washington. The very same issue, upskirting, right. and the court there ruled the same way. And the bottom line is judges aren't supposed to make law. They're supposed to interpret law. And when they come down with this ruling, it's a big cry out to the legislature to make a law that fits modern times and modern technology. This law isn't that old, by the way. It's only 10 years old. iPhones, only five years old. Right. So that's how quickly the world is changing and this you know the, this court made it very clear that they didn't like that they had to do this that they don't agree with the state of the law but that they had to do what the law required. Well, and the Georgia Supreme Court said pretty much the same thing in a in a case that's in a way more extreme. Yeah. A guy sent to put it bluntly pictures of his tattooed penis to a woman who had no interest in getting it. Unsolicited. Unsolicited. And, and they said it was fine. Well, they said that it wasn't covered by what the law there covered, which was hard copy. Right, that you, you could not send pornographic, pornographic pictures material in the mail. In, in the mail. mail, right, exactly. Electronic pornographic imagery was not covered by the law, and therefore, under the letter of the law, again, what the man had done was not illegal. But they weren't saying it was okay. Right. They were saying, get with it, legislature. Let's make laws that cover the new technology. But isn't this a case where the court really had more leeway? Because if you're saying that you can't send it by snail mail, what's the difference in sending it by email? And the reality is you're still sending the pornographic material over some form of mail. It is fundamentally different. The means are different, the method is different, and, and that gets to the bigger question. How can the law keep up with technology? Can it keep up with technology? I mean, the Supreme Court gets these kind of cases every year, and we're going to have to start looking forward instead of looking backward. The law is so reactionary. We wait until there are victims, and then we do something about it. And that's the position, unfortunately, that judges most often are in, not just high court judges. I mean, this case today was the Supreme Court of the state of Massachusetts. Right. So it went all the way through the system in that state. But state court judges, before you ever get there, it's always looking backwards after a victim has complained in criminal or civil court. That's what our judges have to do. It's for the legislators to make laws that look ahead, right. taking into account technology. And that's the thing. Shouldn't there be some sort of movement? Is there nothing out there that we know of that's trying to do that, that's trying to suggest new laws to deal with new technology? You know what I think? Let's talk to the kids. I brought this up with <laughs> my daughter. Right. She said, cell phones under skirts, that's the least of your problems. What about Google Glass? Some guy's going to be sitting on the subway looking through my clothes. I'm not even <laughs> going to have to worry about them looking under my skirt. I mean, young people really are visionaries about the ways in which technologies run up against our traditional 200 plus year old constitutional rights. And we need to be talking with them and our, our leaders, our thoughts 
thought leaders in technology about how to make our laws fit with our technology. And talking about technology and, uh, and our constitutional rights, the state Supreme Court of, of Georgia did not rule on this, but that was one of the things that was brought up was whether this guy sending these pictures by text or by email, that that was within his First Amendment rights. Right, and you know, we, we have to be really clear about this. We, we, the, the, the First Amendment, Google Glass, uh, technology, all of this stuff, it's positive, it's great, it's good. Uh, when used we, we properly. When used properly. Right. So, you know, we're focused on the victims in Massachusetts, the ways in which the court's hands were tied, and, and the ways in which we want to protect victims in the future. But we don't want to, uh, oh, we don't want to focus too much on the fear factor here. We want to work with the legislatures and with our technology leaders to make technology work for our society and to not allow the wrongdoers like this one man, Robertson, right. in Massachusetts to have more control over technology than those of us who want to use it in positive ways. Very important points. Jamie Floyd, always good to have you on the show. Thanks. Always a pleasure to be here.